Welcome back to Walls Can Talk. I'm here today with Steve McEwen and we're going to be talking about bidding wars, which in this crazy market is what's happening and it, it keeps happening to so many of my friends. So um, we want to first talk, start by talking about what do you do? What's the very first thing when you're buying a home? What is your recommendation to start with? So, you know, even in today's uh, hot market with bidding wars and multiple bids above list price, the most important thing any real estate buyer can can do, whether they're buying a big home, an investment property, a small condo, a vacation home, you have to become pre-approved. So if, we, uh, if we're dealing with multiple bids, if that buyer is not pre-approved and they don't have a written pre-approval from their mortgage lender or their mortgage banker, uh, they're going to be blank out of luck because right. sellers won't take them seriously and certainly real estate agents won't take them seriously. So you have to become pre-approved. Right, right. Definitely. And then so what do you think that you should do first uh, when you're selling your home? Do you want to put your home on the market or do you want to wait for the perfect property? I think that's a common mistake that people will have this misnomer that they're going to wait to put their house on the market because they know they're going to sell it quickly in today's environment. And so what happens is if they get into a bidding war and their house is not under contract, it's not even on the market, they've already lost leverage because most home sellers won't sell with a home sale contingency. Some sellers will consider a home close contingency, and the difference is your house is already under contract, you've already passed attorney review. If you have a home close contingency, that means most likely you can close within 30 to 45 days. Right, which is great. Um, and then so what do sellers, what are they doing right now with when they have multiple bids? What's going to win the bidding war? You know, there's so many different factors. Each individual transaction is unique to the seller. So for some sellers, it's just about highest price. We just want the absolute highest, best price. We want to get the most equity of our house. For other sellers, it may be that they have to wait until their next home purchase is available. So they may ask for what they call a rent back situation or delayed closing. So in that sense, that's another factor that may go into the equation as to what's going to be beneficial to this, this purchaser and this home buyer. So it could be price, it could be closing date, it could be flexible terms, it could be as is condition. The buyers that we've actually done deals with this year when we get multiple bids, it's those agents who are really, really smart and they put forth a pre-approval letter. They're buying it as is. They're usually paying a very generous amount above list price and they're not messing around. And so sometimes when you're dealing with those professional agents who put everything in a very uh, simple equation, it makes it easier for the seller to make an educated decision. Which is great. Yes. So when there are multiple bids on a property mm -hmm. and the bid is going for over what it's appraised for. So there's that appraisal gap. Correct. So what do you recommend then when they're going to get a loan? Well, for the buyer, uh, for the standpoint of the buyer, the first thing you want to make sure of is that if there is an appraisal gap, meaning if you make a bid for 500000 but the appraisal comes back at 475000 are you willing and able to cover that $25,000 difference? A lot of home sellers and their agents are using what they call an appraisal addendum, which says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, if you really want this house for 500000 even if it appraises out at 475 or 480 you're willing to bring cash to the table to cover that gap. Now, from a seller standpoint, what we do for our home sellers is we meet the appraiser on the spot when they come and do their appraisal inspection. We include a list of all the upgrades. We include a list of all of the comparable sales. And me personally, as a former licensed real estate appraiser, I can talk to these appraisers in their language because I know the formulas that they use in order to properly evaluate homes. So when I show them multiple bids of 500,000, 505, 495,000, I'll say to the appraiser, Mr. or Ms. Appraiser, what do you think home value is? On this, mark, on this particular house, especially in today's hot market. And you show them usually the first page of the contract just to show them the multiple bid situation and that scenario. So, and I know that you've won multiple um, homes with these bidding wars. What is your secret sauce? Well, if I told you, that it wouldn't be my secret sauce. <laughs> but the truth is, is that, you know, we try to make everything as easy for the home seller as possible. A lot of people don't like the idea of personal letters. I personally like personal letters with photos of, of who you are. And the reason why I like that is because it, put, it puts a personal touch. And we've had bidding wars where our, our clients won the war because they would identify with the seller saying, I grew up in this, in this area. I, I went to this school. I went, you know, my kids will be playing at the park that I grew up in. Right. So when you add that personal touch for what it's worth, that really does go a long way. Obviously, our buyers have to be pre-approved. We try to meet the conditions that the seller wants. So if they want a closing in 60 days, we're gonna meet that condition. We're gonna purchase it with a very aggressive offer. We sometimes use what they call an escalation clause, which means we'll pay $5,000 higher than the highest bid on paper, and they have to prove it to us. But most importantly, we connect them with 
our buyer's mortgage lender. And we have that lender reach out to the seller's agent to show them our buyer is pre-approved, they are pre-qualified. We also talk about the real estate attorney that will be in this transaction process as well. And what we try to do is make it easy for this home seller to make the best decision for themselves to make this transaction as completely flawless and seamless as possible. Well, I think the personal letter is such a great idea, and especially in this crazy market after COVID. And the fact that you're an appraiser probably really helps as well. But Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. And um, thank you for joining Walls Can Talk. Mm -hmm.